Welcome, Michael. Good to see you. Maybe you could just walk us through these two resolutions, and I think we'll be ready to take a vote and send them up to the Secretary's office. Good morning, uh, members of the Senate Economic Development Committee. For the record, I'm Michael Chernick. I'm one of the staff attorneys at Legislative Council, and I primarily write resolutions. I'm going to start with the uh, George Floyd resolution, if I may. That's the file I happen to have opened up first, if that's all right with the committee. Uh, this is what I'm still calling 1037. I, I know it now has an, a, uh, an S, uh, S res number. This is a Senate only resolution, which means that should the Senate decide to pass it, it does not go to the House. It will not appear in the acts and resolves, but it's one chamber vote. And Senator Rahm is a sponsor uh, by, by the version I have right now. I know there are others since then, I believe. So uh, uh, I just want to say on the record that the full list of co-sponsors is in yesterday's Senate journal. I know that might not help the general public, but it'll show that there's far more co-sponsors. Co right, and I, Senator Rahm would have to stay who they are because I do not, the version I have in front of me at this moment, I only have your name. With that being said, the resolution is re relatively concise and it reads as follows. And before I go explain it, I- You're muted. I just muted yourself. We'll start there. again. Okay. Uh, with the one uh, preliminary remark I wanted to say is to explain that this is a Senate policy resolution and not a concurrent because it calls for a day of remembrance and action, and that indicates public policy. And once you get into the public policy realm, it needs to be a policy resolution and not a concurrent. With all that being said, here it is. Senate resolution honoring the memory of George Floyd by designating May 25, 2021 as a day of remembrance and action. Whereas on May 25, 2020, four Minneapolis police officers, including Derek Chauvin, responded to a call that George Floyd, a black man, was attempting to pay for a purchase with counterfeit currency. And whereas despite George Floyd's pleas, Officer Chauvin knelt on George Floyd's neck unabated for more than nine minutes and he became unresponsive and died. And whereas Officer Chauvin was charged with third degree murder, second degree murder and second degree manslaughter. And whereas on April 20, 2021, a Minnesota trial court found Officer Chauvin guilty of all three charges. And whereas this verdict offers a, and his, a historic opportunity for our nation and state to adopt a new course towards the administration of justice that is sensitive to America's racial diversity and historic and continuing tensions between Americans who are Black, Indigenous, or persons of color and the law enforcement community. Now, therefore, it be it resolved by the Senate of the state of Vermont that the, state, the Senate of the state of Vermont honors the memory of George Floyd by designating May 25, 2021 as a day of remembrance and action and be it further resolved that the Secretary of the Senate be directed to send a copy of this resolution to the Vermont Human Rights Commission, the Executive Director of Racial Equity, the Vermont chapters of the NAACP and the Vermont Congressional Delegation and the resolution. Thank you, Michael. I, I also just checked page 1147 of yesterday's journal, and it has uh, all 30 names. So every senator is on the resolution. We hope our names made it on. Anyway, we'll yes, see. it is. So, uh, so I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of resolutions. Um, I obviously signed on to this one and have signed on to others. But thank you for being here, Michael. I've learned a little bit more about the whole resolution process just by your, your, your introduction. That was good. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question, not to change this or to do anything, but the, the, the term end action, it doesn't seem like that's defined anywhere, right? We're just left to common parlance for that. Uh, that is. It's muted again. No, oh, I shouldn't be now. Okay. No, you are again. Okay, there you go. I should be okay, Senator. My apology, my technical apologies. Uh, the term and action was the language that the sponsors. Uh, can you hear me, Senator? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. I'm getting a I'm getting a little sign in front of me, temporarily muted. I'm not sure where that. Uh, that you just muted yourself again. 
No, no, no. I don't know why I am not touching it in any, in any event, senators, um, I think you'll have to defer to Senator Rahm. She had asked me to use that term and I used it. And beyond that, you'll have to ask Senator Rahm. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that the organizations who are calling it George Floyd Day of Remembrance and Action have necessarily defined either of those terms, but there will be a call to silent reflection for nine minutes and 29 seconds. Um, the length of time that Derek Chauvin was kneeling on George Floyd's neck um, before he died. And there is a general call to action as well for that day, that it not just be a day of remembrance and reflection, but that people in their own communities decide what that means and what that looks like, hold community events, you know, commit to- And, 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 and I think we have, the, we have the advantage at this point of sort of, it's so close in time that we pretty much at least organizationally know what the actions are gonna be just like you laid them out. The other question I had is, um, is there any, uh, it may be dumb, but is, was there any thought of like sending this to on a more personal level to somebody as opposed to organizations like family uh, mm. so they can't recognize this? Oh, that's a nice idea actually. Mm -hmm. That is a nice idea. I, I certainly think no one would be opposed and would appreciate that. I, I'm looking at Michael a little bit because we're constantly tracking down addresses for things like that. Do you have a, I, I think I could I, do some searching right now for a sort of memorial site from his family. Yeah, it would be great just to add his family. I think it would be great for them to know that even in a little old Vermont, we're thinking of them and, uh, and dedicating a day to his memory and action. I. Senators, if I may, Michael Chernick again for the. Michael, you just muted yourself again. You're it's yep. strange. It's happening when I'm not touching it. Oh. Uh, what I can do, and I've done in a number of cases, I can add and the family of George Floyd, and then during the morning we can fix up. Uh, we can do it. You muted yourself again. Somehow you're getting muted. I'm putting the mouse now a very far distance from my hand, even though I'm not using it. Uh, I can add senators and the family of George Floyd, and then I can see if there's a memorial organization or I'll track down an address during the morning. Okay. But that will require a... You, uh, you're muted again, Michael. I'm sorry. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, my apologies, maybe, members. Maybe we, I do maybe not we know why that's happening. <laughs> I do not know why that's happening. Can we go on to the next one? Now he's frozen. Oh Lord! Hey, it's a connection problem. I have them both open in case that's helpful. Well, Keisha, why don't you jump in and why don't you lead us through the next one? Michael. Okay. Frozen. If you can hear us, you're frozen. You might want to exit and enter again. Yeah, it sounds like a system problem, and I've had that happen to me before, where it just simply goes mute and and or or, for, or freezes, and it's a system problem, connectivity problem. Is it too late to add Michael Chernick to the broadband bill? <laughs> <laughs> Probably why he's in his office all the time. Um, okay, so. He did that frozen to gone thing. So um, this, the uh, resolution condemning- is, is, is it on our website, webpage? It should be now. Nathan knows where exactly it is because I couldn't find it this morning, but it's SR10. They're and both it, posted. They're both posted on today's okay. date, I think. Thank you. Um, so you'll see it has 20 co-sponsors. I think others wanted to- to be part of it, Senator Brock indicated to me that he tried to tell Bloomer, but things were confusing that day. We had 24 hours to draft this one as well, but um, it's Senate resolution condemning anti-Asian and anti-Pacific Islander hate in the United States and recognizing May 2021 as Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in Vermont. Um, much of the language is drawn from the federal acknowledgement of Asian American Heritage Month 
that is generally sort of housed within the Library of Congress, um, as well as uh, some language from the Stop AAPI Hate Reporting Center, which is reporting 6,603 incidents of hatred directed at Asian Americans from March 19th, 2020 to March 31st, 2021. And those uh, incidents increasing, being on the rise over the course of the pandemic. Um, so the resolution starts by honoring the contributions of um, AAPI Americans, including during the pandemic as first responders, healthcare providers, and medical scientists. Um, it notes the historic election of, of Kamala Harris as our first vice president of South Asian heritage. Um, it acknowledges that the hatred of Asian Americans that's on the rise may have contributed to the national, um, to the recent uh, shootings of six Asian women in the Atlanta area. Um, of those hate incidences reported, uh, it notes that 12 and a half percent were categorized as physical assaults, including against the elderly, and 65 percent were classified as verbal harassment. Um, it notes that in August of 2020, um, the UN anti-discrimination groups issued a joint document reporting that racially motivated violence against Asian Americans has reached an alarming level in the United States since the outbreak of COVID-19. Um, <laughs> On April 29th of 2021, the U.S. Senate, by unanimous consent, passed Senate Resolution 200 condem uh, condemning recent hate crimes committed against Asian American Pacific Islanders and calls on federal and state officials to expeditiously and vigorously investigate reports of hate crimes against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and hold perpetrators accountable. And uh, it notes President Biden's recent, recent presidential proclamation about the importance of Asian American contributions and uh, to the strength and cultural diversity of our nation. And uh, now then be it resolved directs this um, by the Senate that uh, we condemn anti-Asian and anti-Pacific Islander hate in the United States, recognize May 2021 as Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in Vermont and direct the secretary of the Senate to send a copy of the resolution to the more increasingly formal uh, organization in Vermont. It's called APIDA Vermont, Asian Pacific Islander Desi Americans of Vermont. For those of you who don't know, Desi Americans would be like me, someone who identifies from the larger South Asian, um, you know, continent, subcontinent with India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, et cetera, um, and directs a copy be sent to the congressional delegation. Um, uh, thank you for this. Um, I just had a question out of curiosity, if you have any idea, the, where it says uh, the number of these incidents having increased significantly during March 2021. Is there any like explanation for that? Uh, did anything happen in March of that year that they that it jumped? Do you know? I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know, but I mean, I can I can just report informally that I I think. That's when a lot of incidents were um, were sort of broadcast on video. There were video videos capturing um, significant violence against Asian American elders. It may have. It's also when things started to open back up. Um, you know, so I think it's more a function of where we were in the pandemic um, and maybe copycatting, seeing it start to happen across the country instead of the hope and and horror of the whole thing, the publicity around it made it worse well, yeah. <laughs> that publicity often generates copycat yeah. and the west coast was plagued with this during march and before i mean the the stuff that was happening on the streets with older people was just appalling okay anybody have any questions or concerns or we'll just move on to a quick vote on both of these uh let me i i think uh let me just see if becca can join us because I know she we, we, we could hold it open for her if she well no actually probably can't because I don't okay. know when, I don't know when we're going to be meeting again so I'd rather just get it up there uh she could certainly vote on the floor on it yeah I mean certainly write her and, and ask her if she wants us if it's important to her to vote you know yeah so and I, so I think I mean Michael definitely confirmed he could add the piece about George Floyd's family so we do that. Do we do that as a committee amendment, or I, mean, I think this is this this has been introduced already, right? 
Yes. And it was assigned to our committee. So we have to do an amendment. Uh, so we'll vote on the amendment first. And I, I don't know if it can be a committee member. I think it has to be by individuals. Well, let's. Um, I'm just, wait, just waiting on, if you hear back from Becca, we'll give her a few. I, I have not heard back from Becca, but you okay. know, it hasn't been a whole minute yet. <laughs> right, right. And if, you know, we'll certainly, I, I don't know how much more work we have to do this morning, but if she gets back to us at any time well, before uh, we adjourn, well, she can well, have a well, vote. Have we made a decision? Uh, so is the decision... I think we have to resolve the 159 stuff that, that, you know, the non budget, the non. Well, I don't have an, I, I did just hear back from Stephanie Barrett that they did add the language. I was about to write to David Hall to do a draft of the bill without duplicating the language that's now in the budget. And then we, when we meet again, we'll have both of those, we'll have the full package and the skinny version to decide. Uh, but I, I don't think in terms of timing, I don't think it really matters that much if we do this at noon or if we do it this morning. So I'll just keep you posted. And the budget is not closed yet, according to Stephanie. So. Uh, no, uh, and, uh, and Becca has not responded. So I, okay. I, So let's do uh, what's the number on the first one? SR what? 11? The API is 10 and George Floyd is 11. Now let's do 11 first. And uh, I'll move that we amend SR 11 uh, with the language adding uh, copies be sent to the family members as we discussed. And uh, uh, um, I guess Michael is drafting that as we speak. Uh, let me pull you guys up on the screen. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, and now I'll move that we uh, adopt SR 11 as amended. All those in favor, a discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, okay. Thank you, Keisha, for spearheading both of these. And you, Keisha, you're, if there's a report here, I don't know if there's a report, I guess there is. You'll do it, right? I assume. Um, I I talked to Senator Brock to see if he wanted to report George Floyd Day. And I will. I'm happy to. Okay, so right. I, I think uh, Senator Rom, you need to send this when work with Michael Chenick to get the amendment draft to send it up to the secretary's office, and then Senator Brock will be listed as the reporter and Senator Brock. And then I'll send a note to the- uh, I, to, uh, I always just say confirmed. I, yeah, you know, confirming so, that I'm reporting that. Yeah, yeah okay. you need to send the, the resolution and the vote. Mm -hmm. So the vote at the moment is 401. Do we wanna hold it for Becca? Uh, we'll hold it till we adjourn here. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, and uh, next one is SR 10. I have a motion to uh, approve SR 10. I would move that we approve SR 10 as presented. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye or raise your aye. hand. Okay, that's 401 again. Okay, so the only thing I have left. Wait a minute, sorry, and you're going to ask Senator. Oh, Ron. yeah, who's going to want, who wants to report that one? I would like to report this oh, one. You got it. So the only thing I have left for this morning is uh, 150. Well, I, I, I think we've gone through everything on 62. So that's cooked at this point. We're going to get that, I assume, today. But we will, it's coming back as a major amendment to RS62. And I will get up and uh, okay. report that. There's three sections, UI, remote worker, and um, CTE. New, uh, new worker incentive, right? It, is, does, it has a new name, which I keep forgetting. But, I, don't know, I, don't know if they, I don't know if they renamed the bill or not, but regardless, so we will have to, uh, I, I think it's premature for us to take a vote because we don't have the bill yet, but once we get that bill, we'll have to 
report a recommendation, which I assume that is that we concur with the House change. Yeah. This is one of those pre-cooked conference committees, so to speak. So um, that's where that's where we are on that. On 159, uh, what I will do is we will meet again today at some point. We'll squeeze it in. We, I know we have a finance committee meeting, I think, which I thought was at Senator Brock. Was that at 10? Isn't that the I same? No, I, I saw it. Yeah, we're on the floor at 10. I, I was confused by that. Maybe it was 11. Yeah. Yeah. Senators, my profound apology. I lost my internet access. Right. And I just literally got it back about two seconds ago. Okay, we voted out both bills, both resolutions, and with the amendment that you were about to draft on notifying the family on SR 10 or 11. And I can get that. I'm assuming that, if I may, that Senator Brock is reporting the Floyd resolution? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so I will get hit. I will get Senator Brock the uh, the amendment very quickly now. The okay. amendment the amendment will be on behalf of the committee members. Uh, I don't think we can do a committee. No, you can't do it as a unit, but you can do it as individuals. That's right. Do I, I include think. Senator Bailent or not under the circumstances? Uh, we're going to wait a few more minutes to give you that answer, uh, Senator. Rom could let you know we're not turning in anything yet. We're holding the vote open to see if Senator Ballant wants to vote. Um, okay. I can start getting it ready in the meantime, and then Senator Rahm can email me. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is for the chair. Are we are we trying to do this at 10 a.m. on the floor, both resolutions? Or is this no. tomorrow? We could do it tomorrow. Uh, okay. There's a lot of complications going on. I, I don't know that we need to rush it. No, I think tomorrow's better so I can let people know who want to watch. Um, That's fine. Tomorrow. Well, I think it's, a, if, particularly if tomorrow's our last day, I think it's they're great to have on the last day. Yeah. But it may not be our last day. Um, it would help me logistically because given the fact that I'm waiting on Senator Balin and yeah. I've had the internet connection problem this morning, it would definitely assist me if, you were, if I had a little bit of time. Okay. So we'll do it tomorrow. Um, okay, so where I was on 159 is I, I was just in the process of emailing David Hall to see if he could come and join us. But what I want him to join us for. Maybe Nathan could do that while you're. Yeah, could you, could you ask, uh, see if David Hall is available? All I really want to do with him is just see if he knows the language that appropriation picked up from 159 and or if he can find it out and get ready for us. I think it's just really a matter of cutting and pasting what would be left in 159. I know we had like things um, telling DOL to use $75,000 of a fund uh, to do some sort of CTE or something. And there were a couple of other some la the other languages on the Vermont State Colleges that really did not get, I'm pretty sure, not in the budget that were in our bill. So we might want to, we probably want to pass those. Um, the other alternative would be to pass the whole thing and then get up and do a floor amendment, stripping them out. You know, uh, I don't necessarily, or the third would be to, pa to pass it and just have two bills doing the same thing. I don't like to do that. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. No, I think let's confuse people as little as possible. As possible, correct. And let's uh, let's just, let's let Jane take what she'd like from uh, what's appropriate from 159 and let's pass- The rest. Non-financial pieces of it. The language, you know, whatever language yeah, is- that, That's the direction I'm going, but you know, I don't know how the house feels about it and, so, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. The bottom line is we want, we agreed, you know, word for word with the house on 159 and we want all of that to become law in one fashion or another. I don't think anybody's looking to take credit for a bill one way or another. So um, that's, where, that's where we are. So uh, David, uh, Nathan, did you, uh, 
You've written David, but no response so far? It's been less than a minute, but according to his calendar, he's bouncing between, looks like two other committees. Okay. Okay, so uh, unless people have other things, I don't need to keep you here unnecessarily at this point. Um, I think we will have to make a decision on 159. And Senator Brock, I will uh, continue to talk to you at least about the one issue you seem to be interested in getting the wastewater thing back to see if we can come up with a creative way to save 101 in a non-controversial fashion this is some good things in that yeah you know, as i say one from my perspective 101 is fine however the tax surcharge is uh, poison it's, gone. it's gone it's you know yeah i, I realize that that's, Me, that's clear which it's, a po it's a poison pill for veto purposes and it's certainly a poison pill for rule suspensions. So you mean, you know, the, the home is over a million dollars. Yeah. Correct. Right. The so, Ways and Means Committee put that in to pay for the manufactured home credit. And how much did it call a raise? It, the tax raised more than the credit needed, at least over the first five years. Did it uh, speak of the devil, David Hall is here. Oh, okay. <laughs> never, <laughs> never, can go, never, can, never can get a break. Right. Okay, David, welcome. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. So this is just a preparatory talk for our next convening, which will probably come after the floor, fall of the gavel, if we if we're all free. We learned that the appropriations committee, and you may know this, has taken all the language, all the budgetary language from one fifty nine and put it in the budget bill. So I did you know that? I never know what they're going to do. You didn't, you, no, you didn't, but did you know that you didn't know that? Because that concerns me if you didn't know that, because I thought Stephanie was going to be working with you on getting that language. They, they asked me to send them the uh, edited version of 159 as you all had approved it in bo on both sides by your straw poll. What, what, what they actually do with it, I have no idea. Okay. Well, we don't either. Other than, other than we were told that they put it in the budget and it's in editing or something. But I'm, what I'm concerned about is they got it right. You know, that they got the right piece. I don't care where this becomes law, whether it's 159 or the budget. In fact, the budget's safer at this point because 159 right. still has to go to appropriations and maybe even, I don't know, may, may even have to go to finance for all I know. Uh, so, but I want to make sure they got all of it and then the follow-up, there are some pieces of 159, I think, that they would have just left hanging because they're not, they're not related to the budget, including the one you mentioned yesterday to us about the Vermont State Colleges, which you said you said you didn't know why it was even left in there. But, um, but there's, there's stuff like the transfer of money within the Department of Labor Fund comes point. I don't think they would have picked that up. Right. And we still we still want them to we still want to do that. So what I'm asking you to do is, it, to the best of your ability, is to find if you can find out what they took first sure. of all, and and then go through 159 and draft an amendment of what is left for us to pass along. That assuming we want everything to pass and they didn't get everything or they didn't feel the need to do everything from, I assume they did, every, you, you, still, you, you cleverly or you came up with a great, I mean, a, I guess a commonplace solution or you started each section saying of the monies in B305 in the budget bill, this is how it shall go for those monies. I assume those, every one of those sections that you started that way, they've taken and put in the budget bill. But there were some sections that didn't start that way. Yeah, that's that's right. Um, so my, uh, the last that I heard from them, oh, I mean, from JFO was that uh, they were gonna create a new uh, H section of the budget and put 159 there. So instead of section one of 159, it would be H1, H2, H3. 
And so I had 159 completely done. You guys straw pulled 4.1 subject to the house's decision on the C capital fund. House Commerce took a straw poll 11 0 in favor of draft 4.1. Um, they did opt to decouple the general fund appropriation from uh, for the seed fund from COVID, as you suspected. Um, so after you both approved, I had 4.1 edited and then gave it to Chrissy and Steph and Steve. And the, again, the last I heard was that they were going to create a new letter in the budget just for that bill. So I assumed at that time they would just take it in whole cloth. If they have not, then I can certainly r remedy that. But I'll, I'll have to start by checking in with them and see what they've done. Okay. That's, 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 that's perfect. If they did that, that's perfect. I mean, I just think there are certain, there were certain I recall in H-159, there were certain things that really didn't impact the budget. And well, I, that, I, while that may be true, it would be very uh, easy it would to be problematic them. if they didn't pick up all of the sections that go together that relate to a certain subject. For instance, you know, there's like five sections on better places, only one of which has money. So I hope they took the rest, but we'll, right. I'll, have, I'll right. find out. Okay. 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 Let me go do that. All right. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you, David. All right. Uh, anything else, committee, at this point? Wow. 45 minutes of free time. Enjoy. Uh, well, actually not all free because I need to talk with you after we, uh, I'm going to give you a ring. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was off the hook, but I'm back on the hook. Off the hook. I mean, it's just the, okay. anyway, thank you. We'll see you guys at, so it, it just it sounds like we're not holding the vote open any longer for Senator Ballant. Uh, I still haven't heard back from her. That must mean she's really deep in it. And she's a she's the co-lead sponsor of the AAPI resolution. She's obviously, you know, first name after mine anyway on the George Floyd Day resolution. So she's she's on. She's on both resolutions. She's on both resolutions. If she wants a roll call vote, she could ask for it. Or if she wants to make a yeah. statement, she can. I think everybody's going to know she supports it. Uh, let's just uh, adjourn. And yes, we're not going to hold the vote open anymore. No, well, if the resolution is not going to be dealt with uh, until tomorrow. Right. Uh, That's true. You know, I, there's no reason I, I wouldn't think why you couldn't hold the vote. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good idea. But if but we need to tell Bloomer today. Yeah. for it to be up tomorrow, right? Oh, so just amend it. I mean, we could always be, be back and say, we're holding it open. This is the vote at the moment and we'll let you know the final vote at the end of the day. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, I go. technically, we'd have to, technically we'd have to meet, I think, to do that. Right. And there's no I, point I, in giving him an interim report. Uh, right. You know, give him one report when we do it. <clears throat> okay. Well, I mean, hold, if we meet for five we'll hold, minutes. We'll, we'll, hold, we'll hold the vote open um, so, until until we next see her. I am convinced. Uh, I'll leave it to Senator Rahm for all the logistics here. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I am convinced that even if we don't meet again or with her until tomorrow morning, there's a way to get this done within an hour after we meet. So. Uh, okay. If that's okay. important to leave it open, then we will leave it open until she's with us. So, Mr. Chair, what is your plan for when we meet next at, after the fall of the gavel? I, I am, uh, to be safe, I would assume that we will meet after the fall of the gavel, but I will make an announcement. And if I know sooner, I'll send you all an email. Great. I I'm not going to meet for without any reason to meet. So, uh, obviously, I just want to have Nathan. Uh, know where we are and the public. Okay. That's true.